Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Probably if everyone's having fun. Equipment? I think the most important part of sporting events when it's professional is the integrity of the game and the athlete's competitiveness. Uh, the fans, because they motivate the team, and I don't know, they just like set a standard. I'm ready for this. Sportsmanship, equipment, fans, and even cheerleaders are important parts of a professional sports game. But what about one of the most overlooked positions in any game? I'm talking about the referees, and one of the most creative referees, Ron Foxcroft, began his incredible journey of revolutionizing the whistle right here. Founder of Fox 40, Ron Foxcroft, began his journey of creating the Peeless Whistle at the age of 17. After an injury prevented him from playing football, he began refereeing basketball. Has eventually turned into a successful part-time job alongside his full-time job as the president of Fluke Transport and Warehousing. He built a reputation as a referee and was demanded to ref professional and even Olympic basketball games. Despite his demand, he found he was frequently let down by his whistle. The regulation whistles used were inefficient due to the cork being inside of them. They caused lack of enforcement of rules and embarrassment. As a fix, he set it upon himself to create a list of specifications for his new whistle, which he showed to a plastic molding company in Stony Creek. They agreed to make the whistle if he showed them a design and recommended Chuck Shepard, who took on the project as designer consultant. The first prototype was louder and more reliable, but too large and awkward. They set to work to make minor adjustments, and the final result ended up looking like the average cork P whistle. However, the mechanics worked much differently. Soon after, Mr. Foxcroft created Fox 40 International Inc. with his own private funds in 1987. The whistles were first professionally used in the 1987 Pan American Games in Indianapolis. The appeal of Ron's whistle stretched far outside of refereeing basketball and was adopted as the whistle of choice for many sports by 1990. The product line has grown substantially as Ron Foxcroft continues his job as the founder and CEO of Fox 40 as well as the evaluator of officials for the NBA. Mr. Foxcroft's son, Dave Foxcroft, is carrying on the family business as he is responsible for the international global sales marketing Canadian operations. He oversees the company's diverse product base and is instrumental in continued development of Don Cherry's signature series of products. Dave referees football and is actively involved in many organizations surrounding sports goods. <laughs> Fox 40 has grown to include sports equipment, many patented whistles for a variety of different situations, and products sponsored by Canadian icons in their catalog. Most come with a finger grip and a cushion mouth grip. And I think it all started with one little whistle. As similar as it looks to the average cork pee whistle, the mechanics of it are quite different. It is used the same way an ordinary whistle is, but instead of a cork pee being blown, creating a vibration against a drum-like cavity, producing the whistle sound we hear, the air being blown through the Fox 40 whistle produces three slightly different frequencies simultaneously. The three frequencies superimpose each other out of phase, alternately reinforce and cancel each other out, resulting in a loud vibration, which is the whistle sound we hear. So, how important to you is this that your company is active in this community? Oh, that's very important because I was brought up to give more than you take from the community where you live, work, play, and study. That's the values that I was taught with my mom and dad, and that stuck with me. My parents said to me, always give more to the community in, in which you live. And I never forgot that. And, and I've always practiced that. And, and personally, uh, we give a lot to the community. Corporately, 
we give a lot to the community. And um, I believe that that's your commitment as a person and as a corporation to make your community better than when you found it. So we have a strong belief in that. And also, it's the right thing to do. It's very, very simple. It's the right thing to do. The Fox 40 Company continues to play an active role in the community and have created many programs that ensure safety for the members. Their programs all strive to protect people that are in trouble. The WAP, which is a whistle alert program, is a crime prevention program used in colleges and universities. The whistles are used by the students to notify danger or scare a perpetrator. SAFE whistles are hand-beaded whistles that provide children protection during walks to and from school. There is also the Hug a Tree program that not only sounds very environmentally friendly, but is a program that teaches very important skills to children to survive in the woods. The Red Whistle program is a program that includes Canadian Rangers and Junior Canadian Rangers in Ontario. They blow their Fox 40 whistles at emergencies when in the wilderness. Lastly, the SAR scene is a search and rescue event that discusses safety of whistle use in emergencies. The well-being of the community is, is an important part of Fox 40's involvement. The V Foundation for Cancer Research is a program that brings awareness to the fight of cancer that many people face today. Referees everywhere wear blue and pink whistles to bring awareness and support to the cause. Another program that raises money for another important local cause is the South Pole Expedition for Kids. The program raises money to support sustainable nutrition programs and arts for youth in Ontario. Along with safety, there are many other programs that encourage participation from the community. One of the more leisurely and eccentric programs is a one-of-a-kind whistle creation program. It is a competition that is open for everyone. Using a printed image, the creator must make the image come to life using only whistles. Fox 40 whistles are individually fitted into each other to complete or create the overall image that the artist is trying to create. Other Fox 40 products are allowed to be used. The final project is one that is a sight to see. While the whistles are used to create the most ideal environments in sports and other active scenarios, Fox 40 is also dedicated to create the most ideal environment for our environment. With the promise of reusing shipping boxes, reducing their carbon footprint, and striving to have the most efficient packaging for the whistles, Fox 40 is well on their way in creating a more promising environmental future. In 1999, Mr. Foxcroft was inducted in the Canadian Basketball Hall of Fame in the officials category. He is the first Canadian to referee NCAA basketball and is one of the most famous referees to date. Mr. Foxcroft's achievements both with officiating and Fox 40 have not gone on unnoticed. There is a display in the Nangsmith Museum in Ontario that honours his achievements. On a personal level, Mr. Foxcroft's sons and family continue to referee and be active members of this community. Um, so, how far did you expect to call today? Oh, is that ever a great question. When my whistle with the little P kept getting stuck, I'm a pro basketball referee, and I refereed the Olympic gold medal basketball game. And I spent my life refereeing basketball in front of big crowds. And my whistle with the little P got stuck. And when I went to the United States, every big arena, the whistle with the little P got stuck. And I said to myself, wouldn't it be great if we could design a whistle that didn't get stuck? And I could make, there were approximately 300 referees in the NCAA back then, and I said, and I could make 300 people very happy. So I set out to design the uh, PILAS whistle with our engineer, and I remember walking into him and saying, I'd like to make about 300 people in the world happy. And that was it. I just thought I'd make a whistle that would be great to referee basketball games and didn't ever think of doing it as a business or to make money. I just wanted to make my friends happy. Also solve a problem for me in that every time you blew up, whistle with a P in it or like a ball in it, it would get stuck. And you'd have to buy 12 whistles with P's in them to get three of them to even work. So I, I guess I thought it would go to a few of my friends. That was 26 years ago. And now it's gone to between 100 and 140 countries around the world. It's pretty... Uh, you know, it, it's pretty emotional to go to every country in the world, turn on a television set to watch a sporting goods game, 
and they're using box 40s made in Canada by Hamiltonians. Pretty neat. Yeah. <laughs>
what is Canadian culture? And they just thought it's part of it. Canadian culture, we are one of the only and few products that dominate our industry in the world. We dominate the whistle industry, and we're Canadian. And uh, that is a great thing. There are not not too many companies that are Canadian. We've never made a whistle offshore. We've made every single whistle in 23 years in Canada by Canadians. And that's made me very proud because Canadians are very, very competent people. What is Canadian culture? Canadians are extremely competent people. They're honest, reliable, sensitive leaders. And that's what I want to be known as, a Canadian that's honest, reliable, sensitive, and a leader. And that's Canadian culture. Oh, chase your dream. Don't be turning to people looking for handouts. Uh, nothing's easy. Uh, you've got to sacrifice. Understand there's no such a thing as an eight-hour day. I've cut back, because I'm 64 years old, I've cut back to a 100-hour a week. And it feels great to work a 100-hour a week. Like that's, I was 120 hours last so you got to understand, you got to chase your dream, you got to have passion, you got to have work ethic, you got to love what you do, but if you're looking for eight hour days, five days a week, quit. It's not going to ever happen as an entrepreneur. And it's not about the money. It's about chasing your dream and uh, enjoying success, and overcoming adversity. So my advice, chase your dream, work hard, have fun, and um, that's about it. Ideally, what have you done or hope to do that will serve as your legacy with your time? I think that's an easy question to answer. I'm a team builder and a motivator. It's my job in the company to hire people smarter than me at what they do and create an environment for them to succeed and to create a teamwork chemistry. The one thing Angela Mosca, the famous football player, taught me, there is no I in team. So I want to think that uh, I want to be known as a builder of a team that motivates people to succeed and creates a chemistry for everybody around me to succeed. So if you're going to describe Ron, decent person, decent community person, and a team builder, I would want an emphasis on team. So when I croak and they put the flowers on top of my cop and I want them to say he was a team builder. Yeah. Mr. Foxcroft continues to demonstrate his team building skills throughout his work both personally and professionally. Surely his hopes for his legacy will be accomplished as he continues to prove to the world what a successful Canadian truly is. Fox Body has beaten the odds and continues to surprise many and this is a testament to the incredible body of work that Mr. Foxcroft and company have achieved. Welcome to the big show. That's it? Wow, that's easy. Mm -hmm. Um, we're like, when you talk about the business side of it, we also have to write a paper, and we're wondering why Canadian businesses go to the United States. Oh, well, that's a good time. question. Uh, Canada is not entirely friendly. A Canadian business. We're a socialist country. There's a feeling of entitlement uh, from too many people that we're entitled. We're not entitled to anything. 
we're entitled to work hard, employ people. And I'll tell you the other reason that Canadian businesses go. Uh, you don't always feel welcome as a Canadian business in your own country because you're so highly taxed. The government sets a bad example. The government are too fat. They're, uh, they don't move on a dime. Nobody in government understands business. And basically, uh, too fat, too highly taxed, too unwieldy, and the government does in 12 months what I can do in 12 minutes. It's not as friendly in Canada as it is in the United States. In the United States, you're a hero if you're in business. You're a hero if you make profit. Um, you're rewarded by lower taxes. And um, it's, if you can do business in Canada, you can do business anywhere in the United States. Yeah. I couldn't sell whistles in Canada. But once they were successful in the United States, Canadians said, well, they're successful in the United States, um, they must be good. But socialism doesn't work. And you get that socialism entitlement attitude in Canada, and I hate that word. Three words, three phrases I hate. Entitlement, yes, but, and can't. And uh, I love Canadians because they're honest, reliable, they're sensitive, and so on. But I'd rather do business in the States. Okay. That was a great question. Oh. So, what projects are you working on? Oh, you know, I'll tell you, uh, in the interest of uh, consolidating our time, we have just finished launching uh, our marine line, our Fox 40 marine line of products. And, uh, you know, when we did the whistle 23 years ago, uh, our engineer turned to me and said, we have just designed the best whistle in the world. Now you have to spend the rest of your life making it better. So approximately a month ago, we just uh, announced and launched two new whistle models. The Sonic Blast, which is a four-chamber whistle that's louder than any whistle that we've ever used. It's used for the sports industry around the world. And basically the features on it, it, it looks great, feels great, but it's much easier to blow to make an impactful sound. So the Sonic Blast we just announced, and um, we've also announced the Shark. The Shark has basically the same features, four chamber, uh, easier to blow, easier to get a sound, more decibel levels, and uh, it's shaped to fit in your hand for specifically search and rescue and, and around water and marine or hunting or camping. So we're very, very excited about that. On the other side, we're doing a promotional products launch, a brand new launch, January the 3rd, for our logo line, our promotional products line. So we're very, very excited about that. <laughs> so we probably got too many new things happening that would it, it would take up your whole project for me to tell you everything that we've got on the go. Yeah, it's it's uh, the one thing about Fox 40. We deal you know a, a vast array of industries: uh, search and rescue, safety, police, uh, sporting goods. And uh, and that in itself is very exciting. So we we've, we've got a lot of things happening. And the, the last new thing, um, the Fox 40 is a great safety tool. We feel every person in the entire world should have a Fox 40 either on their school bag or their keychain. But it isn't always easy to buy or to find. For example, if if you want uh, a piece of gum, you can go to any store checkout and get it, a chocolate bar. We're going to try and position in 2010 the Fox 40 to be at every checkout and every retail outlet in North America so that when you go into a store, um, you see a Fox 40, 
it'll be communicated with a POP that this is for safety. This is not a toy, this is for safety. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that project right now with our great team here. Um, how do you know Oh, that was good. If anybody knows about a whistle, it's a referee. And I'm a ref. And I used to put my plastic whistle in my mouth and I put at the end of the game it would hurt. It would hurt my gums, my teeth, my mouth and everything. And I noticed all my friends would tape their mouthpiece with a piece of tape. And then the tape, because it was sticky, would get unsanitary. And so what I did one day, uh, I went to a pipe store and I saw this rubber tip you put on the end of a pipe. And I put that rubber tip, I heated it, I boiled it, put it on the end of a whistle and I said, this is great. Nice rubber so you get a good grip, it's better on your teeth, but it helps you when you blow the whistle to get a better grip and you feel more comfortable. So then we took it to our engineers and said, let's duplicate a pipe tip on a whistle. Pretty simple when you think of it. We did, and I, I think 65% of our whistles now have a cushioned mouth grip. And we call it that CMG, cushioned mouth grip. Whatever you sell, you should say what it is. CMG, cushioned mouth grip. Um, did you ever think that you'd be working with Canadian iconic figures like Don Terry and Ben Fisher? No, I didn't because, like, I've never to this day think I'm important. I have not changed one bit in the 23 years Fox Sports has been in business. Quite frankly, I'm overwhelmed, I'm honored, I'm proud to be able to pick up the phone and call grapes and to call the Prime Minister, and to call these iconic people, because I'm just a guy, I've never changed. And, you know, I, I don't spend money lavishly, and the only thing I've ever treated myself to is a nice car, but I don't take long vacations, the most I've ever, I once took a two-week vacation, but I don't now, I take a six-day vacation, and because I'm always at work, and it's really neat. I refereed Michael Jordan's first college game. And when I did it, I didn't think it was anything special. I didn't think I was special. But then I saw him become the greatest basketball player ever in the world. And I thought, gee, I refereed his first game. That's pretty neat. And to meet the people that I meet, I'm still honored, privileged. Uh, this coming Saturday, I'm going to run the Olympic torch. And it's you know, I looked at it today in the front of the newspaper, the spectator on the front page, and I thought, wow, this is quite amazing. So, but you don't, when you're living it, you don't think it. You just don't think it. You just think, I'm going to phone grapes today, and I phone grapes, and, and we're just buddies. And people like that, we're just buddies. Yeah. Um.